If you're like me, you can talk curriculum all day long. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how to get started with choosing your curriculum, but not just let's make a list. Today, I'm going to give you a very specific action plan to help you not only choose your curriculum, but also organize it. Okay, so this is a double whammy episode, friends. You're going to learn specifically how to start choosing. I'm going to give you a very specific action plan, and then I'm going to show you how you're going to organize that information in a spot that's going to be very crystal clear for you. You're going to want to get your notebook for this, or better yet, get out your computer because I got a fun little activity for you. Welcome, teacher, to the Let Your Light Shine podcast. If you're searching for the freedom and permission to design the life you love as a teacher, you're in the right place. I'm on a mission to help teachers just like you build their own dream school or homeschooling business. In this present day, the world needs you, teacher friend, to step out in faith and give students an education they love and so deserve. In this podcast, I will teach you how to start a fulfilling and profitable homeschooling business that lights you up. I'm Mackenzie Oliver, former elementary teacher and instructional coach, gone homeschool teacher and business builder. I'm here to empower you to step outside the classroom and choose the experiences, the curriculum, and all the moments that put a smile on your face and your students. Does it seem like a dream? Well, it did to me until God opened the doors and made it reality. Together, we are breaking through fears and moving the crowd. So get out your notebook, sharpen your pencil. It's time to get your teach on. And it's the beautiful month of May. I wanna say happy Teacher Appreciation Week for all of our teachers and our homeschool mothers and fathers out there. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to the Teacher Let Your Life Shine podcast, and congratulations to Cheryl, Cassie, and Allison for winning the Teacher Appreciation Care Package that's going to be sent to them this week. We're so thankful that you took the time to write this review, and if you didn't win, I just want to say thank you so much to you as well for taking your time to leave the review, and I want to read these out loud. I'm not going to read all of them, but over the next month, I will be sprinkling them in You truly blessed me, and I know that your words are going to give light and inspiration to others as well. So thank you so much. This review comes from Tigress Lynn, and Tigress says, Mackenzie's podcast has been very helpful in both gaining insights to steps to take and where to find resources. I stumbled across this podcast as I was researching what to do to start our own micro school. This podcast and her Facebook group have been a great resource source of support and information in this process and we're on track to start in august 2023 just seven months after sensing god's call to being on this journey i'm so so proud of you seven months and you're ready to go and also there are so many people they've taken longer than seven months there's some that have taken less than seven months. We're all on our own journey. And I'm so grateful that you took the time to write this and let us know that the Facebook group has been a great support to you as well. So thank you so much, Tigress Lynn. And as you know, in honor of Teacher Appreciation Month, I've also been spotlighting some of the ladies in our Facebook group, although there are so many of you who have started your micro school. This month, I spotlighted four of our teachers that were a part of our educational marketing series last summer. That was to help them get started with their micro school. They were Becky McNichol. She was our first interview of the month of May. And then Erica Wimmer that you listened to last week. So backtrack a couple episodes. Last week was Erica Wimmer, the previous episode before this one. And then backtrack two other ones. And that is Becky McNichols. And then tomorrow you're going to hear from Lori. These women are really great examples of those who started their, their micro schools very, very quickly. So if you have the extra time to start, that's amazing because you have time as an advantage. But if not, they are people who started their micro schools very, very quickly and they have had wonderful success along with many others who are part of our Facebook group that we got to make sure that we get on this podcast soon. And as I've mentioned in the previous episodes that we're going to be having our very first 
and awesome forever and ever and ever. Shine on teacher mastermind coming this summer. Be on the lookout for a group and coaching and an academy type of professional development that you have never seen before, my friends. There's nothing in this world that exists like it for us teachers and mothers and homeschool parents who are starting micro schools. This is going to be very authentic, very personalized, needs-based group coaching videos and plans and resources that are going to be given to you as you join us in our Shine On Teacher Mastermind. So you'll want to make sure that you're a part of our Facebook group for the big announcement. You'll also want to make sure that although you have summer plans, that you're paying attention to your email because you don't want to miss how we're starting this off. It's going to be an incredible opportunity for you to be in network with others, for you to be encouraged, for you to have accountability, for you to have someone and others, not just me, but so many others to take you up underneath your wing. No matter if you have already started your micro school, you're growing it, you're scaling it, or you're just beginning. This is going to be for everybody. It's going to be very differentiated based on your needs, no matter what part of the journey you're in. And I'm so happy that I get to share this with you. So be on the lookout. Now, as we get started, one of our very favorite things that we enjoy talking about as teachers and parents is ding, 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 curriculum. And I cannot wait to share what I will be choosing this year. But that is after some very, very, very thoughtful strategic processes that I'm going to share with you today. Now, someone actually asked in our Facebook group, uh, Hannah asked, and I'm so grateful that she asked this question. She said, where are are you when you listen to McKinsey's podcast? And we had many people say in their car, in their classroom, that maybe they're transitioning out of their current role and they're just packing away their classroom, they're packing those boxes and they are listening to the podcast. We had people going on walks, we had people doing the dishes, we had people taking showers and those walking their dogs. It was so neat to hear where you where you're at whenever you listen to this episode. But no one said they were sitting at a desk. No one said they were doing that. So what you're going to have to remember today in this episode is that this is going to require you to get behind a computer today. And this is not one of those, I'm going to tell you to Google and search on Pinterest for the answers. No, I'm going to give you something very specific that you're going to do to help you when it comes to choosing the curriculum for your school. Now, again, I told you to grab your notebook, your pencil, This actually, I want you to take a digital version of what I'm going to tell you to do today. And like I said, if you're on a walk or you're driving, you're not going to have access to do this. But you definitely are encouraged to end this podcast episode and start taking action. And here's what you're going to do first. Okay, I know that you may not have this program that I have, and that's okay. And I'm going to tell you later on how important this program is. You do not have to use it, but if you have a version of it, I highly suggest. What I use as a project management system is something called MeisterTask. You can use it for free. You can use it at a very low cost. I actually pay for mine because it is the hub where I am starting to really organize my life. It's called MeisterTask. I will be sharing more about this and our Shine On Teacher Mastermind coming around this summer. But I highly suggest if you do not have a project management system, which that has taken me years to do. I love a good notebook. I love beautiful highlighters. I love erasable pens. I love planners. I love all things paper, pencil, and pens and markers. But I know that running a business, I've got to communicate with multiple people and I need to organize myself. Google Drive was doing its best for a while, but Google Drive was kind of getting a little bit wonky for me because all I could make were the docs and the spreadsheets, and I need that, and so do you. But I needed a project management board where I could literally move almost like virtual sticky notes, and I could have virtual cork board, so to speak, and it's clean and it's precise. You can compare this to a Trello board. You can compare this to... If you've ever heard of Monday.com, you could also compare this to Asana. Now, learning a project management system can be a learning curve in itself. That's why I said I 
I, I definitely am going to be teaching you this in our Shine On Teacher Mastermind, but it's going to save you so much time, energy, and it's just going to change your life in so many ways. But the reason why you need a project management system instead of a notebook is because I want you to be able to access a system where you can record very easily notes and you can hyperlink. And sometimes Google Docs, they like I said, they do their thing. But then you've got like 10 Google Docs and now it gets confusing where you could just have a screen with a board. And my, my board has, if you're, if you're kind of thinking of a Trello board or you're thinking of a pocket chart, even if you're hanging it up on your wall, you've got these, these headers at the top. And for each header, I've got this on my project management board, I have a project called curriculum. And when I click on that curriculum tab, it's going to pop open my board. And on top of the board, it says K1. And then I have another column that says two, three, four, five, column that says sixth, and a column that says overall. All right. So I broke it down by grade. Now this is me. You may not have it by grade level. For me, we for our school, it is by grade level. We got a K-1 class, a 2-3 class, a 4-5, and a 6. And then I needed another column that just says overall. Okay, now let me tell you why I'm doing this. I know that specifically for kindergarten and first grade, I'm going to need a curriculum that's, that focuses, has a phonics or in, in a phonological awareness component. My sixth graders don't. So the reason why K-1 has their own board is because they're going to have specific areas of focus that I need to keep in mind for when it comes to curriculum. Now, if you're a homeschool parent, you may want to, you may want to take the board and each at the top, put your child's name, Micaiah, Landon, Luca, George. Okay, you can do that. For me, I'm going by grade level because we have a micro school. Yours might look different but your headers need to be the groups of students. Now, then you're going to come to a part where you just need an overall. These are some recommendations. I can't necessarily put this into what grade or what group I want this, but I want to take a look in, at this. Okay. So the very first place that you need to get started when it comes to choosing curriculum is you need a place to store your ideas. Don't let Pinterest be where you're going to store it. And don't let Google and Google Docs, don't do that anymore. Promise yourself you won't do it. I, I've done that before and I got wonky and I just started choosing random things. I want you to have a very cohesive look at what you're choosing. And I want you to have it in a place where you can take a lot of notes like pricing and where you can order it from and are there discounts and who it's good for and who recommended it and why it's being recommended. So you need a place to organize where you're going to keep these recommendations. Now, from this, I'm going to share with you how to specifically, I've got another specific strategy, but there's two strategies today. One is how to organize it. You need a project management system, a board somewhere. Then, for kindergarten and first, I wrote down what it is that I was looking for when it came to their curriculum. Well, I know I need something with reading. Then I made another little sticky note that says writing and handwriting. And then I made another sticky note that says math. And I made another sticky note that says science. And then I'm going to make another sticky note that says social studies. I may also want to put a sticky note that says, or I, and then one that says phonics and phonological awareness. You might want to add more, like technology app. I'm just starting there for now. Start, start with one if you want to, just reading, if that's how you need to start it. So you'd have kindergarten and first and then just a reading sticky note. Same thing with second and third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now, I have a column that says overall. And underneath overall, I have a little sticky note underneath it that says math recommendations. Every time I find a math recommendation or I'm recommended an area or something to look at, I go and I open up that sticky note and I write down what was recommended and I write down why it was recommended. This is very important because you could just search online and put in math curriculum 
you're going to get what pops up on Google, whoever, whatever company has ever paid the most money to Google to have their curriculum shined the brightest. I highly recommend after me doing that for the past couple of years and having to weed through the internet, I got straight to the source, baby. I went straight to the masses and started asking the questions. And where did I go? I did not go to my public school teaching friends. No, why? Because I'm not a public school teacher. I was a public school teacher, but I wanted to go far away from that. So I can't keep repeating the system here, friends. I'm also not a homeschool parent because I do serve children other than my own. Now I am homeschool, but I'm a, I'm a hybrid between a private school and a public school and a nature-based learning and a little bit of Montessori and a little bit of project-based learning. And I absolutely love to see students progress. So I've got quite a bit of information here when it comes to curriculums. And I also love homeschooling families because they have done their research and they are very in tune with their students. They are more in tune with students than any other any other group of educators that I've ever seen. Why? Because they're with their children. They know their kids. I love learning from homeschool families what works for their kids. Why? Because they personalize education because their, student, their children are different ages, boys and girls, different needs, just like in a school, and they know them very well. Homeschooling families, they know the drill. They know the good stuff. And so do teachers and educators in private schools and else in other places. But definitely get a hybrid approach on those who serve children, not just repeating the public school system or the private school system. We're creating our own system here when we start our own micro schools. Now, from this, I have my place where I can organize the information that's coming into me. All right, organize it the way you want to, but I highly recommend digital. Now, let me share with you how I, my second strategy in getting very real and specific to the nitty gritty of how I choose curriculum. I ask very specific questions to Facebook group homeschoolers. It is golden, my friends. It is golden. Right now, we are, as micro school builders, we are learning so much about micro schools and how we can revamp education and make it the way that we want to, which is awesome. You're going to find that there's going to be different types of micro schools. They're going to create their own, cur- their own curriculum and they're going to share it and sell it. If you want to go that route, you absolutely can. That would be another fine route to go. But This is your opportunity to create your own. And you may need to do your real good due diligence of researching what is going to be best, not only for your students, but for you in your learning teaching style. So what I did was whenever I knew that I was going to pop into a group, because I utilize Facebook groups like they are my best friend. I have very specific ways that I utilize Facebook. Facebook groups. I've been working this like a science. I'm going to share this in my Shine On Teacher Mastermind as well coming this summer on how I use Facebook groups to my advantage and what I do every single day. I've timed myself even so that I don't get trapped into the vortex of Facebook. I, one way that I use Facebook groups is I go in there and as a parent, I ask a very specific question that's not just What do you recommend for math curriculum? You're going to get everything from boring old textbooks all the way to the most expensive to box curriculum to unschooling. You're going to get, you're going to just, it's almost like you just did a Google search. When I go into a Facebook group, I will ask a very specific question such as, talk to me about homeschool math curriculum for multi-age students needing a hands-on approach and self-paced opportunities. They're not, in that moment, going to tell you BJU Press. They're not, in that moment, going to tell you Good and Beautiful. They're going to get, they heard you. They know that you want hands-on. 
They know that you want multi-age. They know that you want it to be self, have an opportunity of self-paced. If you go to Google and you type that in, you're going to get, you're going to get some good answers, but you're also going to get whoever's paid the most money up at the top of the Google search. In addition to that question that I asked, I also said with little to no technology, because I believe this is me. This is for me though. This is for our school that children need direct hands-on instruction for math and they need a multi-sensory approach. They also need to be able to advance at their own level and not be sitting in class either far behind or in, or too high. So I wanted it to be self-paced. I wanted it to have very little curriculum c- components that were on technology. I wanted it to be self-explanatory for the students. They can move at the pace that they want to. They can have hands-on. And there could also be some teacher direction. I received the most incredible feedback when I got very specific on the types of questions that I, that I asked. Then what I did with that information was I popped back up my project management board. So I gave it 24 hours to set in that Facebook group. I popped open my project management board. And when I got the answers, I did not go and put the answer to that math curriculum in my K1 slot or my 2-3 slot. I actually put it in my column that says overall. And in my overall column, I have math recommendations. When I double click that little sticky note, up pops the math recommendations and I took notes. I literally copied and pasted what people put in the, in the answer in Facebook. So someone wrote Matthew C, which I'm seeing this a lot, Matthew C. And then they give me explanations on why it's really great. And I copied and pasted them. I'm not going to remember what people say. And if it was really rich, I copied and pasted it and put it into my project management board. And then I also saw teaching textbooks. And then someone gave a recommendation on what age groups they felt like the teaching textbooks would go with. Then I also saw parents talking about a program called Right Start. And when they talked about Right Start for the math curriculum, they mentioned that it's really, really great for the learners, that they get an incredible number sense, and then those students ended up loving math and moved on to Beast Academy. I wanted that information. So when you ask a question and you put it out in the air and it's very, very specific, you're going to get very great feedback. You need to house that somewhere. Because these are also very good talking points for when you speak with families on why you chose this curriculum. You are receiving incredible testimonials from parents who have went through this with their children instead of just hearing it, all the fancy things from the company. You're getting this from families who have utilized these resources. I wish I would have done this over the past couple of years. It would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of headache, and a lot of money. I feel more so than ever that I will make a much better decision this year than I have in all three years combined. And every year, I just want you to know that I felt confident about my choices. And every year at the end of the year, I have always changed something up. And I am not feeling guilty about that. I feel freedom in that. I feel liberated in that. I feel grateful that I get to know kids and I get to know my teachers and I get to know my learning style to where I can change it up. And I'm not working for a school district that's telling me that I have to use a curriculum with fidelity for the next five years because they bought it and they spent millions of dollars and they said so. Isn't that awesome? That is super, super beautiful. Now, the next thing that I do is I start a science recommendation tab or sticky note as well. And I then I also went in and asked about elective courses. So I put in a little sticky note that says electives. And when I asked about electives, I received so many great ideas like sewing and American sign language and fencing and trash can band. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. I want to write this down and be able to give these as electives to our students. And then there was another one for science, which I'm super excited about. I saw over and over, and I wrote this down 
in my science in the little column that says overall, just overall recommendations for science recommendations, I saw over and over again, apologia. And apologia has not only so many different topics that you can choose from in science, but they come with the student notebook. So essentially, especially for middle school, I think this this will be great because they can each choose what they want to learn about. And from what I understand, it is self-paced. So instead of all of the sixth graders learning biology, one can be learning biology, one can be learning zoology, one could be learning physics. And that allows me to provide different elective courses or different subjects in science without feeling as if I need to purchase something online for them to be in front of a screen doing. You might choose that because that's for that's for your students. But for our school, I had a very specific vision and that's how it all started. With the vision of how we wanted our learners to learn and then for every single subject, I just get a fine-tuned, very crystal clear question that I ask a group of families in our homeschooling groups and they start pouring in the information. I mean, 20, 30 comments. Someone actually wrote in for science, a recommendation is mystery science. And then people started elaborating. Oh my gosh, I love that. I forgot about that one. I'm going to check that out again. And then many people began saying, you know, I tried this. It was really good, but the labs were too hard or the labs are too long. And then people would say, I had success with it because I was able to find things around my house to be able to complete the labs with. So I felt so much liberation in finding out what was working for other people. Testimonials will go a very far way. Now, last but not least, after you start asking all of those questions, you're going to get a lot of recommendations. You want to keep piling up those recommendations. And then once you see what you have overall, you're going to go to every single column that I had mentioned earlier, like your K1 column, your 2-3 column, your 4-5 column, whatever columns you've made for the headers, you're going to be able to go into those columns and be like, okay, for our sixth graders, this is what we're going to do in reading. For fourth and fifth, I think this will work well for them in reading as well. But for K1 and 2-3, I'm going to go with this reading curriculum. And now you've got it all up on a board. So you can show, even parents, we're going to start off K1 and 2-3 using this specific reading curriculum. And then when they transition into four and fifth, fourth and fifth grade, we're going to transition them to this type of curriculum. Because what you choose for your kindergarten and first graders, that type of curriculum is probably not going to work for your fifth and sixth graders. I know that's what we've been taught because whenever a school district buys a curriculum, they buy it all kindergarten through sixth grade typically. But now you get the choice. I want to choose this reading program for K-1. I want to choose this reading program for 4-5. I want to choose this math program for K through 5. And then I'm going to transition to this math program for 6. But I think it's very important that once you get your data and once you get your recommendations all in one column, I want you to start doing your research and then you can start breaking breaking it apart into what each category is going to learn for each type of subject, whether it's electives, writing, handwriting, math. But first, you've got to have a place to get all of the information gathered together. And I highly recommend MeisterTask. Second, I would definitely recommend that you fine tune how you want your students to learn. And then for every single subject, you go into a Facebook group and you ask the question and you just keep getting as much data as possible. Get the testimonials that will steer you from going all the way to the left and all the way to the right, because it's very important that you stay on track when it comes to making curriculum and that you, of course, try different things, but utilize what has worked for other people. And again, ask specifically, ask a specific question about what you want your learners to look like, feel like, sound like throughout their learning experience so that parents can give you their best advice. I hope this serves you well. I'm excited to see we need to start asking these questions more often in our Facebook group. So 
Be in, on the lookout for that. Just really fine tuning the types of questions that you're asking. Let's practice in our Facebook group with one another. And then let's start making our boards. Let's start making our, our curriculum buckets so that we can really start weeding out what is going to be best for our schools. I can't wait to see you back here to the next episode because you're going to be hearing from our awesome teacher friend, Lori Rubel. Hey, hey, teacher friend. Thanks so much for listening to today's show. I pray it inspired you, touched you, or challenged you in some way because we are making big shifts and using our teaching gifts for God's glory like never before. I'm so grateful for you. The number one way you can support this show is to leave a written review on Apple Podcasts and also share this with another teacher. Come join me in the Virtual Teachers Lounge, known as the Teacher Let Your Light Shine Facebook group. Until next time, keep shining your teacher light. The world needs you.